okay the topic of our discussion today is root locus plotting root locus so let us take an example here suppose a given open loop transfer function uh, with a, sorry closed loop transfer function with a unity feedback let's assume k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 now in order to solve this i will give you a step to step procedure first of all you need to find out poles poles are nothing but equating how do you get poles first of all by equating denominator of a closed loop transfer function to zero you get closed loop poles if you equate numerator equal to zero you get zeros that's that that's what actually zero mean right that will make the function zero now equating denominator equal to zero what are the possible values for s s equal to zero minus one plus j1 minus one minus j1 are the roots right now these are the roots now next let us take the number of poles and number of zeros let us denote p by number of poles that is equal to three zero i mean one two three right now number of zeros are zero there are no zeros numerator equal to zero you, you only get the constant gain k now you should also calculate p minus j that is equal to three now find out centroid right centroid centroid how do you get centroid is denoted by sigma c centroid the formula for centroid is summation of real parts of poles right listen real parts of poles minus summation real parts of zeros by p minus z okay now summation real parts of poles a real part don't take the complex part so what are the real parts in poles this is zero that is real part in this complex here j1 is a complex number minus 1 is the real part minus 1 and here minus 1 summation now minus of real part of zeros you don't have any zeros here so there is nothing here by p minus z that value is 3 so minus 2 by 3 is the centroid of now calculate the asymptotic angles here asymptotes who do you calculate the asymptotes we have one formula here plus or minus 2q plus 1 into 180 by p minus z this formula we get it from angle criterion so i am not telling rules here if you have any doubts in rules you can put the you can put the doubts in the comment section below i will tell i will i will clarify your doubts there especially about the rules you you will understand about the sum everything here now this q value varies from 0 1 2 and so on till p minus z minus 1 right okay now put q equal to 0 here you get 180 by p minus z is nothing but 3 plus or minus now you can uh, from till how how many q values you can you put there till 2 right because p minus z is 3 p minus z minus 1 so here the available q values are 0 1 2 so don't try to put 1 and 2 you can directly multiply odd multiples here after 1 so this is 1 into 1 180 by 3 here you get 3 into 180 by 3 here you get 5 into 180 by 3 okay now these are the asymptotic angles now we have to calculate breakaway point how do you get the breakaway point you know the characteristic equation the poles are found from characteristic equation 1 plus kg is equal to 0 kg is nothing but minus 1 right this kg is nothing but the given function so k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 is equal to minus 1 now k equal to minus s into s square plus 2s plus 2 right so expanding this minus 2s square minus 2s now differentiate this dk by ds why, why do you need to differentiate i will clarify you here because k value ranges from 0 to infinity my dear friends now this 0 k value have 0 value at poles this infinity value at zeros ok root locus starts at 0 and ends, and ends at k equal to infinity that is they start at poles and ends at zeros also this breakaway points when does breakaway points come into picture breakaway comes into picture when you have two poles Break-in point come into picture when you have two zeros side by side, right? Now, it, it is not necessary condition that there must be two poles in order to get breakaway point. But right at this point of time, understand that way, 
you have to if you have two poles you will get the breakaway point in this between because root locus uh, the summation of poles and zeros on the right side of root locus must be odd number in order that branch should exist here suppose i will clarify you here there are two poles here now should you draw a root locus on this way here or here how can you know you have very uh, you have many possibilities i will draw like this like this or should you draw like this now i will clarify you suppose this is if suppose this is a real axis right then only it is possible now this is an axis right side suppose this is a pole right for this branch to lie on root locus or for you to draw root locus on this branch the summation of poles and zeros lying right side at this branch must to be odd so now you say these are the two points so if you draw root locus here does that satisfy the condition right side of this branch you have one pole summation of poles and zeros on right side is odd number yes so this branch is definitely on root locus so you have to draw like this way and not like this this is absolutely wrong so this rule many one many many people will get confused because because of the english involved in writing the rules in books or some other way you leave it so here so what happens this k value so at this poles here the k value is zero here the k value is zero right zero zero now as you move on, move after pole this k value keep on increasing suppose it keeps on increasing greater than zero here also it keeps increasing so if you draw a graph the k value starts from zero will reach maximum value at some point and will reach zero again here that means at some point the k value is maximum so how do you find that point simply differentiate it the mathematics tells the same way if you differentiate some point either you get maximum or minimum if you get maximum that is break in point if you get minimum it is break away point so this dk by ds what did you get here dk by ds now minus 3s square minus 4s minus 2 now this you equate it to zero you get two points these are complex breakaway points actually minus 0.66 plus 0.47j you will get it on simplification minus 0.66 minus 0.47j these are two complex breakaway points now the most important point which most people will get confused is angle of departure and angle of arrival there are two methods to solve this i will tell you the analytical method analytical method is nothing but solving mathematically if you you can also solve it geometrically but as per my view this is more safer and shorter angle of departure and arrival you know the formula for this is for angle of departure it is 180 plus 5 for angle of arrival it is 180 minus 5 these two come into picture only when you have complex poles or zeros if you have complex poles you get angle of departure if you come complex zeros you get angle of arrival here we have complex poles right since we have complex poles we will they are concerned only with angle of departure here now how do you get phi now listen how do you get phi phi is nothing but suppose the, the, these are the angle of departure you have to calculate at poles right now we have one pole minus 1 plus j1 right so if if you want to calculate angle of departure at this point you have to calculate angle of departure at poles only complex poles so you have to calculate at minus 1 plus j1 how do you find angle of departure at minus 1 plus j1 reason you simply substitute minus 1 plus j1 angle minus 1 plus j1 that is angle k angle s angle s minus of minus 1 plus j1 no wait right s into minus of minus 1 minus j1 simply substitute this point here is equal to minus 1 plus j1 angle of clearly i am mentioning here angle it is not directly magnitude its angle so minus 1 plus j1 plus 1 minus j1 angle minus 1 plus j1 plus 1 plus j1 right now what will you get here 
from k now angle k by angle of minus 1 plus j1 angle of 0 angle of j2 now this is angle of 0 k value is nothing but varying from 0 to infinity positive value you take the angle only from the positive side right so every positive number on the axis will be 0 if you have a negative number no it is 180 degree you have only positive number right k is nothing but positive variable varying from 0 to infinity so that angle is 0 so minus 1 plus j1 angle 0 is nothing but omitted here minus j2 now this minus 1 plus j1 is in the form of a plus ib form the angle is tan inverse b by a but it since you have it in the denominator it is minus tan inverse b by a so that is minus tan inverse b is nothing but 1 a is nothing but minus 1 so minus of tan inverse minus 1 that is minus 135 now you can uh, now this j2 is nothing but pole where will this j2 lie it lies here positive value 90 degree minus 90 so what will you get here minus 225 degree is the angle of departure right I, I am not calculating angle of departure for minus 1 minus j1 since it is a complex pole since you got minus 225 for this you will get the same there also now this minus 225 is not the angle of departure you have to add this to this 180 in order to get the angle of departure remember this is not the angle of departure now this angle of departure how this phi d is nothing but 180 calculated value of phi is minus 225 so minus 45 is the angle of departure here now you have got the angle of departure find out the imaginary axis intersection here also you have two methods either you substitute j omega or do rh criteria is q plus 2s square plus 2s plus k equal to 0 now either substitute s equal to j omega here and whatever you get okay whatever you get equate the imaginary part to 0 you will get k value i, I will explain rh criterion here because you will come across rh criterion at many times so and if, since i assume you know rh criterion also I, I do RH criterion here. You can also simply substitute S equal to J omega equal to imaginary equal to zero. You will get K value. Now, how 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 do you solve RH criterion? First note down all this. Now, this S cube is one one. This is two. Put here. This two is here. Two. This three is here. Here. Now, how do you solve this? This is just opposite of determinant, right? You, you don't multiply this and minus this not if it's ad minus pc okay first you to you have to multiply this and this 4 minus this k by you have to put the denominator right yes it is it is to be divided by this value 2 now you don't have any option any anything here so this is 0 now once again here what will you get first multiply this and this minus this 0 okay minus 4k by 2 into k you, you will however get 0 this is minus 4k by 2 you, you have to divide by the same number so you will get k here now in order to find the k marginal marginal k marginal because imaginary axis of intersection you will have k marginal only right because on moving just to right side of j omega axis it is unstable so marginal stability is there on the j omega axis so this minus 4k by 2 this is k marginal i am denoting it so if this if for which value of k if this becomes zero that means that is a k marginal value right for which value this becomes zero this equal to zero k marginal equal to 4 for k marginal value 4 you get imaginary axis intersection so on j omega axis when you draw root locus the the point at which the root locus intersect the j omega axis there the k value is 4 now the above so you have made this row 0 right if you put k equal to 4 you get this 0 the row above which this 0 row is nothing but auxiliary equation if you write this auxiliary equation here 2s square plus k now you can write it as minus k by 2 minus 4 by 2 minus 2 
this is is nothing but plus or minus j root 2 this is s square right now you have got imaginary axis intersection s value j root 2 now let us plot the root locus now what did you get you got centroid as minus 2 by 3 angles is minus 60 so plus or minus 60 plus or minus into 3 is 180 plus or minus into 5 to this is nothing but 300 or nothing but minus 60 now you have one pole 0 minus 1 plus j1 minus 1 minus j1 so you have one pole poles are integrated by into mark minus 1 plus j1 here minus 1 minus j1 here just assume okay now you have minus 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 is nothing but what did you get 2 by 3 or minus 2 by 3 i don't remember minus 2 by 3 right so minus 2 by 3 you get something around is it less than one? Yes, it is less than one so this is minus one plus j1 right so it will be somewhere around here from here you draw asymptotes 60 degree this is 180 and this is minus 60 so these are the asymptotes here this is this minus 45 is the departure angle made with horizontal axis right now here with respect to this draw minus 45 so this is minus 45 line now you have asymptotes here right now simply drop here so it has to go minus 45 and it just asymptotic angle right now because this is uh, root locus values are always symmetric with respect to x axis first one if it is here then the Im immediately you get the mirror image downwards because j omega axis itself is a complex plane it this axis itself is the mirror image of this axis right so this anything that comes here it is definitely the mirror image of what is here now we know that this intersection is at k equal to 4 right and also here the s value is plus j root 2 here the s value is minus j root 2 and now now you know that this k equal to 4 right at k equal to 4 it is marginally stable so for 0 less than k less than 4 here it is 0 at pole the k value is 0 right from 0 to k equal to 4 it is stable right stable for k equal to 4 it is marginally stable for k greater than 4 it is unstable so stability is explained right right now so this is how you draw the root locus so to take care of some points only practicing helps and if you have any doubt especially with respect to the rules i have not explained the rules here please drop them down in the comment section below and because of your overwhelming response for my first video last year <laughs> i have made this video for you again constructive criticisms are always welcome try to improve the audio quality this time fixed everything i guess any doubts put in the comment section below. Thank you very much.